And the colour you wear near your face is really important because the light from the colour reflects upwards. So if you're wearing the right colour near your face or under your chin, you will look healthier, younger, fitter. It's fact. In this week's episode, I interview Anita Farron Clark. Anita is an image consultant and personal stylist, and I was really fortunate to come across her on an internet search a couple of years ago when I was looking for help with my colours and my style, so with regards to clothes and fashion. Basically, I was really only wearing black, that's all I felt comfortable in, and um, I really wasn't sure which colours to wear, and Anita came to the rescue, and I really value her incredible knowledge when it comes to colour psychology with your clothes and also style and fashion, what's in, what isn't, and we've become really good friends. And I wanted to invite Anita onto the podcast because I think there's just so much that you can learn from her and I hope that it will help you feel more confident yourself in embracing colour and the impact of colour on how you feel. So I hope you enjoy my interview with Anita. Hello, Anita. It's so lovely to have you on my podcast. Thank you, Rona. I'm so excited and I'm so pleased that we are doing this together. And you are wearing such a gorgeous colour. For people who are listening to this rather than watching, she's wearing... How would you describe the colour of your dress, Anita? It's called blush pink and it's a warm, clear and deep pink. So there's a complete Stunning. absence of blue in it. So it's not fuchsia. Think a little bit more coral. Yeah, it's gorgeous, gorgeous. Thank you. So how would you describe yourself? Because on your website, you say you're a personal stylish, stylist and an image consultant. Get my words out right this morning. <laughs> how would you describe yourself when people meet you for the first time? What do you say you are? Um, I say that I'm a stylist who can help you feel and look your best every day. Um, as women, we do lose our way through you know, the different stages of life we go through. And I just help women get back on track and feel and look the best they possibly can every day. Which she did for me. Oh, God, oh. all <laughs> over two years ago. But before we talk more about what your current offering is, let's talk about your small business journey. So sure. you used to walk in, work in the corporate world, didn't you, Anita? So let's start there. Okay, so when I left university, um, I joined the Marks and Spencer Graduate Training Scheme as a trainee buyer. And it was the most wonderful 12 years of my life because I learned so much about fashion production trends, how to put together a very creative but commercial range that would appeal to a wide audience. So that was really the start of my journey in fashion. Um, I didn't have a fashion background. I didn't really realize I was a creative when I was a teenager. It's only when I left home at 19 and my wings were no longer clipped that I realized that I was a creative at heart. So yeah, that's how I embarked on my fashion journey um, as a trainee buyer for Marks and Spencer. And then what did that lead on to after Marks and Spencer? Well, after Marks and Spencer, um, I, I, I found that with two very young children, my daughter was one at the time and my son was three. It was untenable flying all over the world to um, meet suppliers, visit factories, and it was having a real impact on my family life. I had to decide a career or my family life and I don't care what anybody says, you can't have both. And obviously my family, <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously my family came first. So I was very lucky in 2007, I was offered voluntary redundancy. So I grabbed the chance. And um, after leaving m and I had a dinner party with a group of friends one night and I said to them, I really don't know what, I want to do next. Um, I can't be a full-time mum. The kids will drive me nuts. 
I've, I've got to have some kind of stimulation. So please help me decide. So over this dinner party, I gave a group of six friends loads of post-its. Sorry, it sounds like a brainstorm, but this is what I did. And I said, please write down on your post-its what you think I should do next, what I would be good at. And what came out of it was teaching, lecturing, styling, all of that sort of stuff. So from 2007 to 2008, I did a teacher training qualification and I taught at the London College of Fashion for three years. I also in that year set up my image consultancy business, Ferran Clark style. So I would have to say that that year was the hardest, toughest year of my life because I had two young kids, couldn't afford childcare. So I worked round the clock into the early hours um, training to be a teacher, a lecturer, and also setting up my business. So after MS, I taught for three years at the London College of Fashion, uh, which was science, the color of, sorry, the science of color and fashion buying and merchandising. And I also set up Fernand Clark Style, which is my image consultancy business, while grappling with two young children. So who were your first type of clients back then? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, basically, it was all my friends from my contact list. So I basically said to them, guys, this is what I'm now doing. I've left the corporate world. Would you like to be my guinea pig? And would you be happy just paying me a small fee towards my expenses? And it was amazing how receptive and supportive my friends were. That, that community of friends who sort of trusted in me because they kind of knew I was quite good at what I did because I was working for m &S. And they were the ones who really got my business off the ground. So I tried and tested different services um, on, on very close friends and family and, and it worked. And they were very good, as you can imagine, giving me very honest feedback. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there were some things that worked very well and other things that didn't work so well. Um, and what's really interesting, when I first set up my business, I set it up as a personal stylist and a home stylist. And it didn't work because the home, the personal styling went through the roof and the home styling was just sort of petering, you know, sort of just kind of there in the background. So I ditched the home styling idea and just focused on personal styling because that was enough to get my head round and get off the ground. And that's how we met. Um, over two years ago, I remember it was a January. I was in bed with a horrible cold and my husband, um, three or four weeks beforehand, has said, Rona, you're always wearing black. And, and I think it might be something to do with working in the floristry industry as well. It was just so easy wearing black when you're dealing with flowers because, you, you know, you can't wear light clothes because every the piece of dirt would show up. So um, and I also I think I, I mean, I, that will be my excuse, but I think it's very easy to reach for black because I've been told black was a color that suited me and it meant I didn't really need to make that many choices in the morning. And um, I had been to see somebody from Color Me Beautiful a few years before, but that January morning, I thought maybe it's time I saw another Color Me Beautiful consultant to give me a bit of a zhuzh because um, I need help with my color. And I found your website. You were one of the only Color Me Beautiful people locally who had their own website. And you really shone out. And that's how I contacted you. And that's how we met. And yeah, and you came round and you did, what do you call it? A wardrobe? Consultation or wardrobe detox. Oh my goodness. We won't tell people how much you helped me <laughs> detox because I'm quite embarrassed. But it was quite, uh, it was a massive watershed moment for me because I think it helped that we are similar colors and heights and um, I really, the way you explained how color works really resonated with me and gave me the confidence and, and also you gave me a lovely list of things that I needed to buy that were missing from my wardrobe as well. So um, let's talk about colour and the big thing which I struggled with initially, which is how 
color near your face is really important the one that you choose can you give us I know this is difficult for people on podcasts that we can describe the colors but could you give us some examples of what works and what doesn't for example with your coloring sure sure happy to um if I may just go back to what Mm. you said uh Rona when I met you um to be honest yes you were trapped in black but (laughs) um so was I as a buyer and recently the Telegraph published an article about me which is my journey of moving away from black into color. Um, So, you know, don't beat yourself up about it if you were or still are trapped in black, you know, there are ways you can sort of move yourself out of that, but it has to come at the right point in your life. So for you, it was that cold January morning, feeling really bunged up and really flu-like. And for me, it was feeling absolutely there after having two, very small kids and feeling that color was the color was I was wearing um, was draining me so that's that was my journey and yours was was slightly different so coming back to color wearing the right color near your face will make you look healthier younger fitter it's absolute fact and there's a whole science behind it it's not sort of some um sort of those words aren't banded around willy-nilly. There's a whole science behind it. And the science um, was created by a guy called Albert Munsell back in the 1920s. So if you guys want to do some further research on the science of color, he's your man, Albert. And basically every color has three components to it, an undertone, a value and a chroma. But I'm not gonna go into the science too much. And the color you wear near your face is really important because the light from the color reflects upwards. So if you're wearing the right color near your face or under your chin, you will look healthier, younger, fitter, it's fact. And if any of you were in my studio now and I draped the colors under your chin, you would see how much better you look in some colors than in others. And There's a lot of psychology behind color as well. By wearing the right color, it profoundly affects the way you feel, your your posture, how you come across, how others perceive you. And wearing the right color is like magic, not just for you because you feel you look your best, but for others as well. When other people see you in color, it's just so fabulous for them. Um, may I do a little demo yes, now? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. So um, I'm what you call a deep dominant because I have dark hair um, and dark eyelashes, which are extensions, by the way, <laughs> and dark eyebrows. <laughs> so I'm a deep dominant. Um, I'm also a warm undertone because I have a lot of yellow in my skin. And I am what you call a clear chroma because I've got a little cheeky sparkle in my eyes. So what I suit is deep, warm and clear colours. So what isn't great near my face are colours that are cool and light because they're the opposite really of what I ought to be wearing. So this colour isn't as good for me. If as, people are, are um, listening to this, and um, what colour would you describe that scarf um, that you're wearing? A very light blue, lighter than um, the sky is in the summer. Um, I would say it's sort of like an O'Donnell colour. Yeah. Would you agree, Rona? Mm, mm-hmm. What? Oh, I know. What flower would be similar to this in colour? <gasps> there aren't many flowers that are blue. So, yeah. uh, um tweedier maybe yeah it's a very pale blue isn't Mm, it yeah so this isn't as great as a color that is warm clear and deep and what color would you call that this is like a lapis blue so think um the majorel gardens in uh, marrakesh yeah it's sort of purpley as well isn't it it is it is slightly Mm. purpley um so yes it's a very deep sort of lapis or cobalt blue if you like um, Mm. is the best way to describe it so the color black and the color white does black suit everybody and does white suit everybody um interestingly no but 
it would be an absolute travesty if I told a woman she couldn't wear black. <laughs> Because we all love black as women. Um, well, not all, but most of us. So black suits certain um, dominance. So for instance, if you are a deep dominant or cool dominant or clear dominant. Um, but then the categories who have to be a little bit wary about wearing too much black near their face would be what we call the softs, the lights and the warms. But if you want to wear black and it's not great for you near your face and you feel it drains you, just wear it in a lower neckline or in like a, a V-neck or something. Absolutely V-neck, mm. cow neck, um, or wear it in a fabric that is shiny, light reflecting, because that takes the opacity out of um, the value, the depth of the black, or in a sheer fabric like... Um, uh, a, a, a sheer silk, a chiffon or tulle, because mm. again, it's it's more translucent as opposed to opaque. So black, be careful, ladies. Um, it doesn't suit everyone. And in the same way, white doesn't suit everyone either, because basically what you want to uh, do with colour near your face is keep the harmony and balance of your natural colouring as opposed to do the opposite with it. So if I look at you, Rona, you're a beautiful deep, you've got lovely dark hair and dark uh, eyebrows and dark eyelashes. So you do suit deep, dark, strong colors because that's your coloring. So white is a very light value and that's too much contrast with your natural right. strong color. Contrast word. Yeah, yeah, mm. it's, it, it's contrast. So it's basically, if you just think balance and harmony. Mm. So. For instance, if you've got beautiful red hair, you suit warm colours because your hair is warm. If you've got more uh, ash tones to your hair or uh, sort of slightly high colour, more pink tones in your skin, then you suit more cool tones, et cetera, et cetera. There's so much, so well, I suppose at the end of the day, we're all very different, aren't we? So there's going to be yeah. lots of different terminology for each kind of person that you are so when you analyzed me I was a deep you were you were deep uh, oh what was really interesting about your coloring is you had changed from when you mm. were last um seen by the color me beautiful um consultant but ladies even without us trying our colors can change potentially up to three times in our lives wow. and that's the three p's when we have the most biggest hormones surges in our life so it could be puberty pregnancy and perimenopause so i think your colors changed when you hit menopause um yeah uh, rona i hope you don't mind me mentioning that no 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 Sorry. i don't mind it's, it's come out the bag now um <laughs> So, so your colouring, your skin tone specifically had changed. So just, just be aware of that. So the colours that suited you when you were younger may not suit you later in life. Um, and if you were to dye your hair, that would change sort of the colours that suit you near your face. So Rona, you're deep because you have that beautiful, strong, uh, uh, dark look with your hair. You're cool because your skin is more pink than golden. Mm -hmm. and you're clear because you also have that lovely sparkle and twinkle in your eye so you don't have that softness with your eyes it's, it's brighter so you are deep cool and clear so I'm sorry for those lovely people on the podcast who can't see Rona's colours but those are some of her best colours so Anita's um for people on the podcast she's showing a wallet of how many colours are there Anita 40 50 42 42 colours yeah. of clothes that I can wear and I take this whenever I go shopping but lately I haven't obviously been out shopping so um, I just look at if I'm really honest I am addicted to your Instagram account Anita oh, bless you. Bless you. <laughs> and your blog and um, yeah because I just love your sense of style so can we talk about because there are so many different components when we're getting dressed in the morning or choosing to buy something new to wear there's there's the color and yes. then there's the, the fit and then there's is it on trend or is it 
something that we love or you know um and then I also feel there's a sort of like sort of the whole comfort factor and lifestyle you know there are clothes that I have in my wardrobe that I haven't worn for over 18 months because I've not been out of the house very much (laughs) so I think the whole well I've read loads of articles about the fact that clothing manufacturers are really sort of changing what they're creating at the moment so I don't know where you want to start with that but how you helped me has been incredible so what do you think is the best way of tackling this um, object? I, w- I would talk about it in the five stages. Um, and please interject, Rona, if I'm going off piste. Before I start, just want to say, with Rona's little colour wallet, this is a guide, not a Bible, because although there's 42 colours on here, Rona could probably wear another three, 400 colours because she can uh, deviate from these by going lighter or slightly darker, Um Uh, cooler but maybe not warmer and clearer so this is a guide as opposed to a bible but I'm glad you take it shopping with you (laughs) okay so when I saw Rona and for any woman on a personal styling journey this you now do online as well don't you I do I do and to a worldwide audience which is wonderful because there's no geographical um, restrictions when you do it online so there are five steps in a woman's personal styling journey and to make sure she's got her right toolkit because you will all have your own little toolkit. So I always say, stay in your lane. Uh, yes, you may see something on Instagram that you're inspired by, but always ask yourself, is it right for me? Yeah, it looks fab on her, but is it right for my little toolkit and my lifestyle? So everything starts with color, absolutely, 100%. There's no point wearing the perfect shape in a dress if the color looks pants. Uh, So, you know, it's all about making sure the colour's right. Then it's about knowing your body shape, scale and proportions. And women fall into six different body shapes. Then it's about looking at your style personality, which is very much dictated by your lifestyle too. Uh, And there are six main style personalities, but I work with 11, just to really drill it down and be specific. And then we look at appropriateness. So is it appropriate for, you know, uh, work, rest and play? For, so it comes back to lifestyle, if you like. And last but not least is, is it current? Do you really want to be a fashionista or do you want your look to be dated? Think Hillary Clinton. So what we're really looking for is assessing how much you want to push it in the fashion stakes without looking too dated. So those would, be, I would say the five steps that you know you now Rona know um, what those are for you and you've got your own little toolkit so you'll become more confident buying the right things for yourself and knowing that when you get dressed in the morning you cannot look any better. Well I think you just touched on something that I really want people to take away from this is it's very much for me personally it's changed how I feel when I wear certain clothes, knowing that, as you said, you're doing the best that you can. I still make lots of mistakes. I've shown you clothes and you've gone, no, Rona. <laughs> but, but in a nice I, way. Yeah, yeah. But nine times out of 10, if I follow the, the sort of guidelines that you gave me from the session we had together, I, I feel a little bit more confident purchasing things. But, you know... <sighs> I think it's so hard sometimes to get the balance right. And and I think you're very keen to, if you buy something, you've got to feel that you can wear it with lots of different things as well, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, for someone who works as a stylist, you'll be shocked that my wardrobe isn't bulging. I'm a firm advocate, and I hope this comes through on my Instagram account, Rona, that buy less, but buy better. Think about natural fibres. Don't overwash your clothes. If you buy something, make sure you love it. Even if it's 20 quid or 200 quid, make sure you absolutely love it. And before you buy something, say to yourself, can I create at least three different outfits with it? Is it plugging a gap or is it just more of the same? Um, And sometimes people say to me, oh, 
gosh, Anita, you take all the fun out of shopping. <laughs> Why? But but I, I I I that's not my purpose. I just want women to buy less but buy better. Um, because there's a huge issue with sustainability, global warming, all of that sort of stuff. But what really women um, want is just guidance with this. And coming back to what you um, said, Rona, um, as a woman sort of critiquing what they're wearing this morning, you're, as an individual, you can be very subjective about your style, your colouring, whereas me, I come in, I'm completely objective. I don't have an ulterior motive. So I've got to make sure if I'm doing my job well, I'm making you look and feel your best for your vote, for your coloring, body shape, lifestyle proportions, etc. Because the last thing I want to do is clone you. <laughs> Always put you in stuff that I like, but it's about putting stuff, putting you in clothes and colors that make you feel just amazing every day. So how do you feel that fashion has changed since the pandemic, Anita? Oh, very interesting. Um, it's changed quite dramatically. I think women have realised that they've just got too much stuff gathering dust. Um, how much do they need to consume and have hanging in their wardrobe? So they are asking themselves more questions and it seems as though they are buying less but buying better. Comfort has had a huge part to play in how they dress. And I don't believe being trapped in joggers um, is the right answer because you can get comfort if you buy well. So think about elastication, fabrics that have elastane in them, fabrics that are maybe knitted as opposed to woven because knitted fabrics have a bit more give. So I think comfort has been quite a key element. But what has been profoundly obvious is how women in the last year have wanted to wear more colour to lift their mood. It's been wow. unbelievable. The number of colour consultations that I've done because people realise the psychological benefits of wearing colour, that's been unbelievable. So I would wow. say colour, comfort and buying less but buying better. And what I love about you I haven't and I well I tried in the summer but you'll wear dresses around your house of, of course absolutely <laughs> because dresses are probably the most comfortable thing you can wear because there's no fixed waistband you know there we go there's plenty of uh room and movement there and it's one piece you don't have to think about matching top jumper whatever uh but I do I do although I wear dresses I wear about two or three thermal vests underneath them <laughs> And we have to talk about the Uniqlo Sweat heat catches. tech. Yeah, the heat tech and the yeah, the summer ones, air some airism. 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 Yes, I have multiple, I multiples in my wardrobe now because Good. I find that you know, since I've met you, I don't wash my jumpers anywhere near as much because I'm always well wearing a layer underneath, which well is helping the environment as well as yeah, you know, helping save me time. <laughs> yes, but it also keeps your clothes in pristine condition because if you overwash your clothes, shrinkage, stretch, bobbling, color loss, um, all of that sort of stuff can uh, color migration, all of that stuff can can happen. And um, I probably wear the Uniqlo heat tech vests, which I call the sweat catchers. Oh, probably 10 months of the year. Yeah, uh, I, I wear them all the time. So I've got one underneath this dress at the moment. And what's lovely is um, when my husband does the ironing on Saturdays. Oh, you've got him well trained. Oh, I know, I know. My pile is this high because it's mainly underwear. Which is not and very much if you're listening, if you're watching the podcast. Yes, but everybody else's pile is huge because they've got shirts and jumpers and trousers and blah, blah, blah. So mm. I feel very proud that when Tom has to put my washing away, there's very little to put away. <laughs> so if someone's listening to this podcast, Anita, and I don't know, let's take an example. Let's say they're in their, I don't know, mid 40s yeah. and they're feeling that they need or they would like a bit of color excitement in their wardrobe is there anything that anybody can wear very good question absolutely now although i bang on about color what is really important in your wardrobe is to have a 
good balance of neutrals versus color because neutrals do underpin everything and neutrals are really good mixes. And by neutrals, I mean navy, taupe, beige, soft white, even some of the greens, black is obvious, the charcoals, the browns. So it's really important to have a good balance of neutrals plus a color, so other colors that aren't classified as neutral. And there are universal colors of which there are probably about 12 that suit everybody, regardless of their coloring. Um, and I'm sorry for those on the podcast, but I'm just going to show you eight of the universal colors that absolutely everyone can wear. And these are turquoise, navy, purple, pewter, soft white, charcoal, taupe, and cornflower blue. So as a quick sort of fix, uh, make sure you've got a good balance of neutrals, not all black, but other, other uh, key neutrals, and then colours such as some of the deeper greens, turquoise, and some of the brighter blues, like a cornflower blue. Purple, for instance. Everybody can wear purple, and in colour psychology, purple is the colour of creativity, um, so it's a good colour to wear as a florist or have lots of purple flowers in your shop. And it's one of my favourite colours. Oh, I I love it too. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So buy something in one of those universal colours if you want a colour pop straight away. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I say and I would say you can't go wrong with purple or cornflower blue. Do you think people are a little bit more conscious about like this part of their body? So the top half of their body now that Zoom calls have been what's been keeping us going for the last year and a half? Absolutely, 100%. And I do a lot of training as well as in the last year to help businesses, small businesses, large businesses, make sure that their workforce are cutting the mustard on Zoom because you have now overnight in the last year become presenters. Yes. <laughs> haven't we um yeah so yeah. yeah so the color on your top half is very important so just one little rule if you've got a neutral background don't wear a neutral because you'll then look camouflage if you've got a bright a bright background then you can get away with a neutral so think about contrast with color yeah really uh, good point so yeah if if you're watching this on youtube you're able to see that anita is wearing an amazingly beautiful pink dress and your background is really neutral isn't it yes so, it's, it's a yeah. gray yeah. yeah it's lovely yeah and I think we're just much more aware of collars and neckline details and and not things that are really really big to make you look even bigger on the camera absolutely and you know what is very important if you're on a team's call so you're on online with other um employees is you do actually want to get noticed, but for all the right reasons. So I think it is important to create some contrast with your background and wear the perfect color that you feel confident in. Um, And if we come back to color psychology, for instance, if you wear red, say on a Friday when you're slightly exhausted, red is the color of confidence, energy, and being in control. Yes, you may not feel it, but, it gives that impression to others. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those colours that really stands out and doesn't, you know, like orange as well, I think, can yeah. look really amazing. On It doesn't suit me, it suits you really well, but yeah, really well. Let's talk about your passion for small business owners because you're always, always championing. I mean, you will talk about like your good, better, best on your Instagram stories is really good and I think you did one on white shirts I did um, yes this week yeah um, which I can't wear so can we do one on another color shirt please I'm teasing I'm teasing we'll do well I did do black blazers <laughs> you did do black blazers um so why do you feel so passionate about small business owners when it comes with regards to fashion I think because I am a small business owner and It's a struggle juggle being a mum setting up your own business. So it resonates with me and it doesn't do anybody any harm. Giving a shout out, giving some support, being kind, helping in any way you can. Because bless them, some of these ladies who are running their small businesses could be from their bedroom or home or their kitchen table. Um, Plus, I also think that 
you get uh, more creativity and USP, unique selling propositions from these smaller brands, which don't have to dilute their creativity to be, be commercial and sell to the masses. So you do get um, products, styling, clothes, accessories that are a little bit more unique than maybe what you would find in a big high street chain. Um, and I think really fundamentally it's about helping women um, uh, you know, I have had so much help and support in the last couple of years, also by you, Rona. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And, and uh, yeah, I think that's the reason. In any way I can, I will, uh, I will help a small business because I'm a small business owner. But I've also worked in the big commercial world, which is really cutthroat. Um, and I would just tell you one thing. Um, before I left m &S on my last appraisal, they said to me, Anita, you're too kind. You're oh. too kind. You, you don't screw the suppliers hard enough. And I just, there you go. It says it all because margins, margins, margins yeah. are really important. So, you know, and I know, so that sort of, yeah, stuck with me. So that's why I help small businesses because yes, they have issues with margins, but they don't have, all of the support behind them that they need, like in a big corporation. I am the marketeer, the accountant, the social media expert, the brand, blah, blah, blah. And so are other small businesses. Um, can I just touch on, we've talked about women, but you do help men, don't you? I do, I do. <laughs> and let me tell you, sometimes men need more help than women, but <laughs> gosh, <laughs> their wives or girlfriends have to drag them kicking and screaming into my <laughs> studio or the best way to help a man is the partner uh, gives them a gift voucher but yes I help okay. men as well um, yes I just yeah. wanted to emphasize that just in case anybody is listening and thinking yeah I would say 98% of my clients are women and probably 2% are men yeah <laughs> right before we finish off Anita please could you share your three tips oh three styling tips or you can make them business? any type of tip you wish I okay really don't mind okay uh all through my working career uh and it, it sounds a bit cheesy but always be kind always be helpful because you never know when you might need someone's help on the way up or on the way down. Be kind, be helpful, and never worry about oversharing. Tip number one. Brilliant. Um, tip number two, never um, put things down to luck. Seek out opportunities and at any point in your small business journey, email, message, pick up the phone, because the worst thing that can happen is somebody says no, but give yourself the opportunity by asking and seeking people out. So I don't believe in luck. I believe in what I've done is by latching onto opportunities. You're so good at that as well, Anita. So and good. just thank you. One more thing to add to that. I say to my children who are teenagers now, if you don't do anything, you're failed by 100%. Wow. But if you ring up and still nothing happens, at least you can say I tried and you failed by 50%. Yeah. Okay, so that, that would be tip number two. <sighs> tip number three, social media has been phenomenal phenomenal for me in the last year. Put yourself out there because it's a whole new um, platform for you, which is free. Instagram is free. And when I first started on Instagram three years ago, probably 5% of my business came from Instagram. Now it's probably over 50% of my business comes That's from brilliant. Instagram. So put yourself out there, however awkward it may feel to post a pic or a reel or a video, just do it. 
And if nobody, as, sorry, if nobody's seen Anita's reels, you just have to go and watch them. They oh. are hilarious in the, well, they're very inspiring, obviously, because you've shown fashion. But um, yeah, I just love it when you did the one on the catwalks. You were like people turning up for a fashion show and you were all these different personalities. And yeah, you, where do you get your ideas from? Um my problem is I have too many ideas, so I, <laughs> I never have a problem. An, I never have an issue with content. Just you know, I've been doing this for twenty six years. It's all in my memory bank, and I just write things down. So I've got a little notebook that just says uh, IG, so Instagram ideas, and I just pop everything oh. down in there. So I kind of walk around with it in the house. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so just from my experience, Rona, and also watching other people on Instagram and thinking, yeah, I would do it differently. This is how I would do it. And then I log it in my brain. Wow. Thank you so much, Anita. And oh, thank you for pleasure. wearing that dress. I've got oh. massive envy. Where's it from? It's from a little label. Again, this is the great thing about small brands. I found this little brand on Instagram and her name is Joanna Sands Official. Uh, so yes, yeah, spelt J O H A W N A, Joanna Sands. Um, and what a pleasure to be able to speak to you, Rona. So thank you so much for inviting me today. You're more than welcome. And if people would like to find out more about you, Anita, where can they find you online? Um, well, my website is uh, fernclarkstyle.com. That's F E R O N. F E R O N. Um, so Ferron Clark style so f-e-r-o-n clark no e style um on instagram i'm at ferron clark style um so yeah or if you just type in on google anita ferron clark you'll you'll see lots of images and links about me and you also have got a newsletter and a blog as well i you? do yes i try and write a blog once every two weeks not always possible because i'm quite busy i'm not a full-time uh a micro influencer on Instagram. I do see clients, so it's quite hard to fit everything in. Um, and yes, I have a website and a blog that comes out every every two weeks. And also, if there's anything that people like that you wear on Instagram, you have a link to what's it called? Like it, know it, or something? Yes, like to know it, and like everything is linked in my bio. And I try and save things in the highlights. But if people like things and uh, they want to direct message me, I do try and get back to everyone. Although it's getting harder and harder to do so as my followers increase. But Which I, is I, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> but I do try my best to get back to people. Yes, and I have uh, succumbed to purchasing hey, maybe a few things from your like, know it. Oh, oh good yes. I'm glad to hear it yeah. but only if you really need it and love it Rona oh I always whenever I try it on at home I'm like do I really really love it and how many times would I wear it don't worry it's ingrained in my head <laughs> <laughs> yes just pretend I'm that parrot on your shoulder <laughs> that annoying parrot <laughs> you're not annoying at all Anita oh. you're my little guide Oh, bless so, you. Thank you so much. And um, I hope everybody's uh, come away and realised that they can wear the colours straight away from today. So get that purple and what were the other two or three? Cornflower blue, turquoise, uh, pewter, fabulous colours for everybody. And you'll feel so much better. So I hope you enjoyed my interview with Anita. She is such an inspiration for me when it comes to colour and fashion and style. And I hope she's inspired you to think more about what you're wearing and the colours you're wearing and your lifestyle and how your clothes fit in with your lifestyle. Maybe you want to go and have a wardrobe detox or maybe you'd like to book a consultation with her and really think about how you feel when you get dressed in the morning. I'm much more conscious now than I ever have been. And I really enjoy the fact that I buy clothes that make me feel good, um, which we all need, especially at the moment. So I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. It'd be wonderful if you'd like to subscribe to my podcast on your podcast provider and to add a rating or review or like. And I will see you next Tuesday.